Let's go ahead and bring in oceanographer John Englander. He's the author of a soon-to-be-published book titled Moving to Higher Ground, Rising Sea Level and the Path Forward. John, thanks for joining us. The demonstrators got our attention. Now you have our attention. What's the warning? What's the risk? Well, Rowie, we, you know, this is the risk we've been talking about for years and, in fact, for a couple of decades now. We're reaching tipping points. Some of the recent articles that have gotten uh, recent press attention are that the, uh, the various tipping points appear to be cascading. And by that, we mean that, for example, the Arctic sea ice, which is melting quicker and quicker, is understood to be responsible for changing weather patterns in the world, but also could be involved with slowing down the ocean currents, um, what we think of as the Gulf Stream in the Atlantic, but there's obviously off prominent currents in the Pacific. And these are all changing. It's part of a bigger picture. And the, uh, the cascading tipping points is the, the latest concern. A study released this week said that previous estimates of land elevation were wrong, and thus the number of vulnerable people was underestimated. Can you help us set the record straight? Sure. The, the question of how many people are vulnerable to flooding as sea level rises is an important number. But it's a very hard number to define, it turns out. First of all, if sea level becomes one meter higher or 1.1 meters higher, um, what does that extra 10 centimeters mean? And that's hard to extrapolate or project onto how many homes would be flooded. That's one problem. The study you're referring to is that in a lot of the world, particularly the under, underdeveloped parts of the world, the accuracy of maps about elevation are a little sketchy. And there are some newer techniques where we can interpret satellite images and get a better or more accurate um, picture of, of the height of the terrain, the topography. The mistake that they've discovered in that recent study uh, from prior years was that in certain places, tree canopy, the tops of the trees was dense enough that it looked like land. And now with some uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning, we're able to uh, decipher those satellite photos at a global level and get a better understanding of the actual land height. It seems that uh, just a handful of nations account for the majority of people that will be immediately affected by rising sea levels. China is one of those countries, but can these countries prevent this on their own? No, it's a global picture. You know, I, I like to say that there's three things we need to look at here. There's the, the greenhouse gases, what we think of as the carbon, but it's really carbon dioxide. We have to reduce that. And the fastest way to do that is not only by international agreement, but by pricing carbon dioxide, or what's shorthanded as carbon. That will allow us to slow the warming faster, which is a really important. That's the underlying problem. But even if we could somehow magically stop all carbon dioxide emissions now, we would still have the effects of the heat that's already stored in the ocean. That includes strange weather patterns, the fires, the, the droughts, the floods, all the unusual weather that's been hitting us in the last few years. That's not going to go away immediately, even if we could reduce carbon dioxide emissions to zero. So we have to be more resilient to these extreme weather events, which we're seeing month by month. John, these protesters and then the third have, thing, I'm sorry to cut you off, I just want to ask you about the protesters because we've been talking about sure. them. They've drawn a connection between consumerism, or I guess overconsumption, if you will, and climate change. Are they right? I think there's a connection. Um, I don't know that I would direct uh, my concern about climate change into uh, Black Friday shopping. Uh, it's, I, you can't say there isn't a case, but I don't think that's the, that should be the right focal point. All right, John Englander, oceanographer, thank you for joining us. We'll be looking out for your book.